Hi you guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Torrance here. And in today's video, I wanted to talk to you about a few different things that I've noticed when you borrow makeup from a makeup lover versus when you borrow it from a makeup artist. But before we get started, I would love for you to hit that subscribe button. If you already have, I'd like to say thank you. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. But enough with that, let's go ahead and get into today's video. The first thing I wanted to bring up was, was exactly what inspired this video. And that's because anytime I go over someone, let's say a friend or a family's house, well, before this whole pandemic situation, it was always me noticing the exact same thing. If for any reason I forgot my makeup sponge and I asked to borrow one, it seemed like everyone had the exact same sponge. And I know nowadays many people are starting to venture over into more affordable brands, but at one point in time, if you ask someone for a sponge, the same one came up. The original Beauty Blender. Now, I have this one here simply because this was the very first one I purchased. I used it for a little while, cleaned it, and then I put it up on the shelf. I actually still have the first Beauty Blender sponge and this one and the original black one that I purchased simply because I preferred the black one. I feel as if it has a firmer texture and doesn't absorb quite as easily, but it seems like no matter whose home I went over, everyone who loved makeup and tried all different types of things, had one of these and it is a beautiful sponge it was just funny to realize how much of a cult classic this had became amongst the public because if for any reason i went over a makeup artist's house and needed to borrow a sponge they didn't let me borrow this one the same one that they used on their clients and the same one they let me borrow would be this one here the real technique sponge and the reason being is one it was a really good sponge. I have them and I use them, especially on clients. It's not the one I prefer on myself. But the main reason we used it is because it was a quarter of the price. Point blank period. If you are a pro makeup artist and you have to realize there may not be time to go ahead and get in between brushes where I can clean and disinfect them before the next client. Many times you have to have multiples of different brushes and different tools on hand to get through the day. Most people don't want to spend $20 per sponge to fill their kit. They are usually, by the time you get to freelancing, you feel comfortable in your skill to the point where you realize Having this $5 sponge may not work the exact same as that $20 sponge, but the difference isn't going to make or break my technique and my skill. The same bomb look I can achieve with that $20 sponge, I'm comfortable enough in my skill to know I can get that with this $5 sponge, and these are the ones I'm going to use and buy and carry. They may have other brands, but most pro makeup artists are not walking around with a train case full of beauty blenders because they cost too much to keep rotating. Because at the end of the day, a sponge does not last quite as long as a brush. So knowing that I have to buy these and toss these, most people who are freelancing, you will catch them with a real technique sponge before you will a beauty blender. More than likely, if they carry a beauty blender, they either truly love them, like some people did have them, so they may just truly love them, but it's a really good chance that they're either A, getting a good discount on them, maybe even getting them free in PR, or, you know, just came up on a nice sale, but the average person is not going to be spending that kind of money on a sponge, but it's funny enough to think that the average makeup lover will buy them. The second difference I noticed when borrowing makeup from a makeup lover is that if for any reason you say, hey, I left my eye primer, do you have one I can use? The first thing they're going to pull out Something like this. This is a Maybelline, I believe this is the Fit Me Concealer. Yeah. They're going to give you a liquid concealer. Because almost any and everybody I know who does their makeup uses a liquid concealer in a slightly lighter shade around the base and to carve out their eyebrows. They'll use it to carve the brow, bring it straight down, put some powder on, and get started. And although I truly believe that is a nice method, most people can use it, it can be a problematic issue if you are someone who has extremely oily lids. You may find that using a liquid concealer 
can help increase the chances of that happening simply because you're taking something that was meant to hydrate and look nice across the skin. And if you already have extra moisture coming through, having something that doesn't truly mattify and dry down on the skin or create a barrier between the skin can possibly cause issues for you, which is why you may need something that is an actual eye primer and not just a concealer. But any and every time I've gone over, say like my sister's house or my cousin's house and we've been playing in makeup, they don't pull out straight eye primers because they're not spending any extra money because they don't feel the need. Most of them will give you a lip concealer that they use simply for eye priming and keep it moving. I used to be the same, but I'm someone who personally prefers an eye primer and my personal favorite is the Soft Ochre Matte Paint Pot. Paint Pots are not technically considered an eye primer. I believe these are just a cream shadow base, but most people use them as eye primers, such as myself. If you even check most of my videos and you look at the description bar, you'll notice that I've used the MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot in over 90% of my eye tutorials. And this is what mine looks like, honey. That has a huge dip in it. When I tell you I've had this thing for years. If you buy one now, honey, you don't have to worry about running through it. I don't care how you do your makeup, this thing will last you. And it works best when you use the thinnest layer you can possibly get on the eye, which is why it lasts so long. But this is a thick, nice pigmented tub. It looks small, but there is plenty of product in here. And it has a slightly waxier base, which is why it makes a good eye primer because it helps create a slightly thin layer between your skin and the makeup. And that wax helps block oils from coming through and breaking down the makeup, which usually is the number one culprit. And I have this in four different shades. I have this in a slightly lighter shade, which is called Painterly. This one is rather new because I've barely had to use this one. I would normally use this on someone who has a lighter skin tone than me or someone who has more of a cool tone or like a pink rosy tone. I would use this for them. The shade Soft Ochre is for someone I will use on my skin complexion or maybe lighter. This is something that has a very nice yellow undertone. So someone with a warm skin tone would probably get this for me. This next color is called Laying Low, and this is the color I would probably use on someone who has a slightly deeper complexion than I do. It would also be for someone who probably could be my complexion, but wants something that's a little more natural. I tend to prefer a much lighter base just so I can get the most pigmentation out of my shadow, and I'm comfortable with knowing that I'm gonna blend properly in order to diffuse those edges and not have a harsh line underneath my brows. And for the deepest of complexions, I will go in with this shade here, Groundwork. This is the darkest matte shadow that they have currently, but as of today, I did just check on Trend Mood and I've noticed that they have released some brand new shades. So trust and believe I will be checking out the MAC page because I do want to know if they've come out with a shade that is deeper than this, because if so, I will be grabbing it. Number three on the list is setting sprays. Anytime I borrow a setting spray for someone who just loves makeup, they all tend to have the same one, which is also my personal favorite, so I'm not upset at that but they all seem to know and love the cult favorite, the Urban Decay All Nighter. This is the one I use here on a daily basis. And usually whenever I get the single bottles here, I tend to get them on the Ultra 21 Days of Beauty simply because they're half price. And at that price point, honey, I can never pass them up. I always get at least one bottle, but most of the time I grab two because in my head I tell myself, it's the price of one, go ahead and spoil yourself. But if for any reason they aren't on sale, they're normally $33 a piece, what I try to go for it is the dual set that they tend to have. And recently that was from the Urban Decay Stone Vibes collection. So they had this set here. It comes in the normal containers, but it does have this limited edition box. And this set is usually $42. So instead of buying one bottle for $33, to me, I say go ahead and get this for $42 if they normally have them there, if you can't find them on sale. But many times these are in stock during the Sephora 20% off Rouge sale, so I love grabbing them then. But if for any reason I were to ask a pro makeup artist for a setting spray, usually they don't have the Urban Decay one. And that's because Urban Decay has their setting spray manufactured by Scandinavia. Scandinavia makes different setting sprays, but the one that I carried in my kit and the one that almost every MUA that I know has in theirs is the bridal one here. And the funny thing about it is, this one eight ounce bottle of Scandinavia costs less than buying two of the four ounce bottles of the Urban Decay. 
So that's one of the main reasons that most people like it is because the cost is better. And two, chances are if Urban Decay trusts Scandinavia to make their products, Scandinavia has to be doing something good on their own and I promise you they are. I've never had a client come back and tell me that their makeup did not last all day and knowing that I used long wearing products plus set it in the Scandinavia, I knew their makeup would last. So I never had any issues and like I said, I personally prefer the Urban Decay formula just a little bit better on my skin, but I'm never without this one, especially if I'm going to do someone else's makeup. Number four on this list is mattifiers. And I always get the same confused look anytime I ask a family or friend, do you have any mattifiers? They always look at me like, what is that supposed to do? Like the only thing I have that's gonna mattify the skin is these. And I'm usually seeing the Maybelline Fit Me Powder, or the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. And although technically these will mattify the skin and these will mattify any foundation that is underneath them, this isn't quite what I mean when I say I need something to mattify the skin. And if I were to say that exact same phrase to any makeup artist, more than likely they would hand me the MAC Matte Cream. This is something that has a clear color to it and it's something that you can use as a primer or sometimes I like to mix it into other products it won't instantly transform any and all products into a matte product, but it will help bring down the glow to a foundation or anything that you mix it with. Most makeup artists would use this as a primer, or this is something that you can use on bare skin, just in pinpoint positions to help mattify the skin. My favorite place to put a product like this on the days that I'm wearing absolutely no makeup is on the sides of the nose. I tend to find that if for any reason I'm sweating or anything like that, or my skin is just giving off a bunch of excess oil, if I go ahead and just mattify right here on the sides of the nose, I seem that is the number one spot where I'll get the strongest effect and it usually doesn't bother me any longer. And that is also the number one place where my makeup starts to break down first. I can always tell the longevity of a foundation by how fast it's breaking down on the sides of the nose. And this is a product I know most makeup artists tend to have, but if I were to ask the average makeup lover if they have it in their collection, more than likely they won't. Number five on the list is spatulas. The very first time I asked my cousin if she had a spatula because I wanted to scrape one of my eyeshadows, the first thing she handed me was this here. This product is called a spatty and this is a product that went viral on the TV show Shark Tank and it actually is a really good product and after using hers I went out and grabbed my own and I'm not sure if you can see it but it's a small silicone spatula here and it has like a little pink shovel on the tip. And this one here is the lip one. It's the one I recommend everyone get because it has the smallest and thinnest shovel on it so it gets into more products. But you can use this because of its shape to scrape the actual sides of the tube to make sure you get every drop of it. And you can also use it for a shape to scoop a little bit of product out to just use it for that moment or completely clean out the tube to take it and put it in another container. Anytime I have a lip gloss or concealer that gets extremely low, I can use this. But if for some reason I wanted to scrape a shadow or a pigment, I don't trust using plastic or silicone because I don't want to risk getting those stained or dirty. So this isn't something I could use. But if I were to ask a pro makeup artist if they have a spatula, more than likely they wouldn't hand me this. What they would hand me was something that looks like this. This is a metal spatula here. And it has two sides to it. This one is from MAC Cosmetics. It has a flat side, which you can use to scrape products like I would have used for eyeshadow. Or it also has this scoop side, which looks like a small shovel. And you can use this to scoop out products such as pigments and glitters. And you can use that so you don't necessarily have to touch it with your fingers or with a silicone applicator, which would actually allow those products to adhere to the surface. This one wouldn't allow it to do so. And to me, I generally prefer metal ones because they don't stain or damage quite as easily. And this is usually why pro MUAs have them because of their durability and their ease to clean. Number six on the list is liquid illuminators. Although these products may not be quite as popular as they used to be, it does seem like more natural and cream based makeup is on the rise so they may come back. It seemed like at one point in time, if you were to ask the average makeup lover which brand of liquid illuminator they had, they would all pull out the same ones. And those were the Cover FX Drops. I have this one here in a miniature because I found that I personally could never go through a bottle before it expired. So once I received a sample size, I realized this is perfect. I'm never even gonna run through all of this. So there's no point of buying a full bottle until this runs out. 
And to me, they are absolutely beautiful. But what I've come to find is that they can go from zero to 100 really quick if you use too much or if you're not paying attention. And many times that is exactly what kept a lot of people from using them. If you got the wrong color, you truly noticed you had the wrong color. Or if you took and you mixed it in with your foundation but put too much, it certainly gave you this glow that was extremely noticeable and that may not have always been flattering to many people. It could look beautiful in pictures, but in person, it was something that was easily pinpointed and that may not be the look you were going for. But if for any reason I were to ask a makeup artist for a liquid illuminator, more than likely they would give me something that A, I could mix into my foundation or something I could use as a subtle highlight. They wouldn't give me something that can go extremely over the top because more than likely there's never a setting where they need a highlighter like that. If so, they could just go back in with a powder highlighter on top instead of mixing it in and having too much of a glow all over the skin. So they would give me something like the MAC Strobe Cream. This is my personal tube. I absolutely love this product and I use the shade Gold Light, but I always kept one of these in my kit just in case I needed something for someone who has extremely dry skin. I personally preferred using a matte foundation simply because it gave me the longest wear, but someone with dry skin may not be able to use that, so I would also be able to mix this in and turn that into a more dewy or glowy foundation. That way I can use it on them and instead of baking, I can just set their makeup and still know I'll get an all day long wear effect. And even though I would always keep gold light for myself, I always kept another shade with me and that one would be pink light here. I personally cannot find exactly what happened to my red light, but I would also use that for deeper complexions because I personally found that red light just looked a little more flattering on women with deeper skin complexions, but the pink light and gold light generally did cover most complexions, but these two I keep for myself. Although I would never mix pink light into my foundation simply because I don't have a pink undertone, I do like to use this in areas where I know I'm going to put my highlighter, especially on days where I'm going to wear a pink toned highlighter. And for this last one, I'm going to throw this in as a bonus. And I want to do this simply because I cannot find it. I've been looking for about two days and don't know exactly where I've placed it. So I'm going to have to ask you to use your imagination when I show you this first palette because it isn't exactly what it's supposed to be, but we're going to act like it is. Anytime I've been doing my makeup over a friend's house, and I could not decide exactly which color eyeliner I wanted to use, but I knew I wanted something that was long wearing and something that matched the eye look I was doing, I could always ask them, honey, what type of waterproof liners do you have? They'd be like, okay, what type are you looking for? I'm like, I don't know. I just know I need something that's going to match my look. And it would always be the same thing. A palette full of water activated eyeliners. Many times they would be the Suva Beauty ones but it was always those cake liners that you know you could just take, dip your brush in some water or add a drop of water to them, mix it up, and then you put it on and you know you have a long wear color. You know it's not going anywhere and it could always match your eye look because they would give me four or five palettes and I would have all different types of colors and I just had to go ahead and do my makeup, look for a color that matched that, and then I would be good to go. And the thing is, that's a beautiful thing to have. If you have all of those different colors and you actually love the formula, there's nothing wrong with that. But I am someone who generally has very few eyeliners simply because one, I'm not the hugest fan of weak eyeliners because I feel as if they tend to take over the look. And two, I found a product where I don't necessarily have to buy eyeliners because I can always create one. So if for any reason I were to ask a pro MUA for a product so I can make an eyeliner and I wasn't sure exactly which one I was going to use, they would hand me this, the Inkblot Duraline. This is a product that comes in an eyedropper type bottle. You would just screw the cap off and there's a button on top. You would just press the button and it would release product drop by drop. The harder you press the button, the more drops you would get. But in general, you only need one or two drops to do your entire eye look. If you've watched my previous Juvia's Place video, which I'll leave linked right here above, you'll see all I did was take one of my metal spatulas, scrape one of the eyeshadows out. I took a drop or two of this product right there on top of it, mixed it in with a brush, and turned it into a liquid eyeliner right there for my cut crease. And I absolutely love this product. Once someone showed me how to do that, I've always just carried a bottle of this with me instead of carrying eyeliners. I may carry a black and a brown one with me, but I'm not carrying a rainbow palette with me because I never know exactly which shade I'm going to use. But I do know if I use a brown and a black eyeshadow on your eye look, I can take one of those brown or black shadows 
and create a liner and know it's going to create a cohesive look. I don't want to use, say, a teal eyeshadow that's more blue based and then all of a sudden going for a teal cake liner and find out it's more green based. Maybe it's still pretty, but maybe I wanted something that was more blue based like the shadow. But if I go ahead and use the shadow, it will be the same color and it'll be a waterproof formula because this Inglot Dura Liner does not play, honey. I've cried and got caught in the rain and this still held on. So this was the last product and I just want to give a special shout out to my Snow Angels palette by Dose of Colors because although I could not find my cake liner palette, I'm telling you, it is going to drive me crazy till I find it. And I don't recall letting anyone borrow it so I had to just set it down in the wrong spot while I was cleaning but until I find it, it will irk my life. But I hope you all truly enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you also leave me a comment down below if you've ever experienced anything like this or if you have some of the products that I've recommended, whether that be the ones for the makeup lovers or the ones for the makeup artists. Because some of these products are geared more toward makeup artists, all of them are available and sold to the general public. So if you see something you like, I would recommend that you give it a try because every single product I've shown you in today's video is a product that I use and I would recommend. It is funny to see that we can all use different products for the exact same reasons. But once again, I hope you all truly did enjoy today's video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button before you leave. If you already have, I'd like to say thank you. Make sure you hit that notification bell. But with nothing else, remember to practice, continue to stay blessed. And until next time, goodbye YouTube.